Hello class, this is Miss Augustine. We are still talking about kinetics, which is chapter 17, and today we're going to talk about rate laws. So rate laws for reactions, uh, or a rate law, is an equation that relates reaction rate, how fast it proceeds, to concentrations of the reactants. And it's very specific. So there are specific rate laws for each reaction and for the forward versus the reverse reaction. It also applies to specific reactions at specific temperatures. So different temperatures, different rate laws. Remember, as the temperature increases by 10 degrees, in general, the rate of a reaction doubles. So a rate law might look like this, where R is equal to K times concentration of A raised to a power, concentration of B raised to a power, where K is this specific rate constant, and it's really a proportionality constant. So the rate law is this equation that relates the rate to the concentrations of the reactants. The rate of a reaction with respect to each reactant is determined experimentally by holding temperature constant and holding one of the reactants constant while varying the concentration of the other reactant or reactants, and then measuring the rate and you perform several experiments. So at temperature X, say 25 degrees, you'll hold A constant and vary B, then you'll hold B constant and vary A, and you'll measure the rates. And the rate law is written from that resulting information. So for this general expression, R rate equals K, the rate constant times the concentration of A raised to a power and B raised to a power. Um, we should talk about the power to which a reactant is raised and what that means. In general, N and M, or the orders, are small whole numbers. Um, and it could be zero, it could be one, it could be two. So the power to which a reactant concentration is raised is called the order with respect to that reactant. So the value of N is the order with respect to the concentration of A. The value M is the order uh, with respect to B. And K is your rate constant. And the overall order of a reaction is equal to the sum of the reaction orders, so sum of N plus N in this case. So if N was a 1 and M was a 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, it would be a third order reaction. So here again is our rate law. So what does it all mean? So if N was a zero, so A to the zero, what that means is that the reaction rate does not depend on the concentration of A, as long as some of it is present to react. So that would be zeroth order in A. An order of one means that the reaction rate is directly proportional to the concentration of that reactant. So for instance, if the reaction was first order in A, if I double the concentration of A, 2 to the 1 is 2, that would mean the rate would double. Whereas an order of 2 means that the reaction rate is directly proportional to the square of that reactant. So for instance, if I double 2 times the concentration of A, 2 squared is 4, that would result in a fourfold increase in the rate of the reaction. So the value of the rate constant is then determined from all of these concentrations and the rate data. So the value of the rate constant is determined from the experimental data for concentration and observed rate. And again, it's very specific for every specific reaction and for each temperature. So the units of K will depend on the overall order, so they can get kind of freaky molarity cubed or molarity squared per second. So again, the units depend on what that overall reaction order is from the equation. It does not change for different concentrations of reactants or products. Um, but it does change at different temperatures. In general, as you increase the temperature, the value of the rate constant increases, and it also changes if a catalyst is present. So it would increase with the presence of a catalyst. So 
we need to talk a little bit about the reaction pathway as well. If a reaction occurs through a single step pathway, which is not very common, but let's say it did, then that step is the re reaction rate for that step is proportional to the reaction concentrations and they are each raised to the stoichiometric coefficient. So if we had a reaction A plus 2B goes to C and it was a one step single pathway, then the rate would be written as the constant times the concentration of A to the 1, so there's my coefficient of 1, and B squared, so there's my coefficient of 2. And in general, this is not how rate laws are determined. In general, they are determined experimentally using concentration and uh, measured rates. So if the reaction proceeds through a sequence of steps, then the rate law is determined from the slowest rate step because it has the lowest rate of reaction. So this step in general is called the rate determining step. So if you think back to um, stoichiometry where the most you could make was the least you could make, the limiting reagent determined things, similarly the slowest rate step determines the rate. So again it impacts how fast something can happen. So for an overall reaction of nitrogen dioxide plus carbon monoxide to produce nitrogen monoxide plus carbon dioxide. The first step in this is two nitrogen dioxides collide to produce nitrogen trioxide and nitrogen monoxide. This is the slow step. And then in the second step, the nitrogen trioxide meets up with a carbon monoxide to form nitrogen dioxide and carbon dioxide. Fast step. So the rate determining step here is step one and um, the overall reaction sequence you would be adding these two steps together and canceling out stuff that appears on both sides so it would match this equation up here but in terms of the rate law what's happening here is the slow step is determined by the concentration of nitrogen dioxide meaning nitrogen dioxide so the rate is going to be the rate constant K times the molarity of nitrogen dioxide squared so I thought we'd do an experiment. Here are three experiments were performed to measure the initial rate of reaction at room temperature, so 25 degrees C. And our reaction is a simple A plus B forms C. And we're going to find the order with respect to each reactant and then calculate the value of the rate constant from the data. So here's the data. So you'll notice I have the concentration of reactant A in molarity, concentration of reactant B in molarity, and the rate and the rate is in molarity per second. So here's our data again. So let's look at it. So when A is held constant, so here A is kept at 0 0.0800 molar, and the concentration of B was doubled from 0.03 to 0.06, we notice that the rate went from 0 0.006 to 0 0.012, so the rate also doubled. So doubling the concentration doubled the rate. That means that the reaction is first order direct relationship uh, between B and the overall rate of the reaction. So then we'll look at A. So when B is held constant, so here between the first and the third reactions, um, B is held constant and A is doubled. A goes point, from 0.04 to 0.08 the rate went from 0 0.003 to 0 0.012. So this multiplied by a factor of 4. So the rate went up by a factor of 4. So we doubled the concentration and the rate went up by 4. That means that it is second order in A. So doubling it, multiplying it by 2, 2 squared is 4. So that's where I'm getting that value. So then we would write our rate equation as the rate is equal to some constant k times a squared, second order, and b raised to the 1. So first order, second order. So again, we're going to calculate the value of the rate constant using that data. So here is our data, and here is our rate law, some constant k times a 
to the second power and b to the first power, so a squared b to the 1. So let's identify our variables, our rate here, our concentration of a, and our concentration of b. So I just took the first experiment, and we're going to calculate k. So now k is equal to rearranging rate divided by concentration of a squared times the concentration of b raised to the 1 power. Here I've plugged in all of the various numbers. Um, you'll notice that we have molarity cubed in the denominator and molarity to the first power in the numerator. Here is after I've plugged them all into my calculator. So our k turns out to be 31.25 molarity to the minus 2 seconds to the minus 1. So now I'm going to check. I'm going to take my rate and I'm going to see what it is plugging in. Here's my k. Here is my concentration of A. Here is my concentration of B. I was being a little lazy here, leaving off some of the zeros. And here is my uh, rate uh, in molarity per second. So this is just the check to make sure that when I've calculated my rate constant and I kept it to four sig figs, because all of these numbers had four sig figs, and then I plugged it in to see if I get that same value, and I did, so it was good. So these are very complicated, and I know it's very confusing, but um, it's really about just looking at which one is held constant and which one is changing. And in the second um, example, or the second part of it, when B is held constant, and A is changing, and then looking what happens at the rate. So this is Miss Augustine. I hope this helped. I'm signing off.